A great evening to you. Warm welcome to Prime Business. I am Pius Kujobaka, economist Professor Peter Quarte is upbeat about market certainty, investor confidence and unlocking of some key resources following an official announcement of an end to Ghana's debt restructuring. According to government, it has successfully restructured its debt of $5.1 billion with these creditors in addition to concluding the restructuring of $13.1 billion with eurobond holders. Now, to this end, about $8 billion in interest payments have been saved. Reacting to this development, Professor Quarty urged government to invest the savings in the productive sectors of the economy. Uh, this certainly will bring certainty, some relative certainty to the market, to, to the minds of investors, to the minds of Ghanaians, uh, because uh, it's taken it's quite a long time to come this far. Uh, you don't know whether they will agree to the terms and what the terms will be its impact on our investment, interest payment, etc. But now we are close to knowing exactly what the, the terms are. And, and I think that brings certainty to the market and that can have some positive effects on the exchange rate and by extension uh, inflation and inflation expectations. We can also see that there, there is going to be some savings mm. and with this amount of savings that is coming to uh, government, it could be channeled into other more productive areas that will stimulate production, can stimulate growth and, and employment in the immediate term. Um, we would also see, uh, or we're going to also see that with a restructuring, it's going to free some resources because um, if government had to pay the debt today or to pay this year, it means it has to find this money to pay interest and, and uh, also service the debt in terms of capital um, uh, repayments, but with, with this new um, um, agreement, certainly um, it has to reschedule and pay some later, and that is a good thing. It frees up resources for us to, to move forward. But we must uh, set a caution that, in as much as we have benefited from this um, uh, restructuring, we've benefited from uh, the savings, we should manage uh, spending this carefully. We should not. Um, move again to the high debt distress situation. We need to create a fund because if your debt has been restructured, it doesn't mean it's been forgiven. Well, on the back of that, we understand that the International Monetary Fund has given its blessings to the deal after government reached an agreement with euro bond holders. Now, this was contained in the term sheet of the agreement reached with these commercial creditors. There is more in this report. The sheet revealed that the IMF staff have confirmed that the agreement in principle is in line or compatible with program parameters in the context of the IMF second review of Ghana's three-year program under the extended credit facility. This assessment will have to be officially confirmed before the next IMF board meeting this month for the approval of the second review. Based on the preliminary analysis, the official creditor committee conceded that this agreement in principle is a good basis for a consultation of the OCC members in order to provide promptly the collective assessment of the committee regarding the comparability of treatment principle. Now, some pharmaceutical manufacturers say they expect the funds from the International Monetary Fund to be invested in the critical sectors of the economy to ensure economic stability. Board Chairman of Local Pharmaceuticals Products Manufacturers of Intravenous Infusions, Isaac Osei, mentioned to Joy Business that local manufacturers are struggling, hence the need for more support. At the company's 2024 annual general meeting, Board Chair of the company, Isaac Osei, said the company is optimistic of making profit despite the current CD depreciation and other factors hindering its operations. He said the company would focus on using its core strategies to increase revenues and resources and to boost its export. All these things is the trajectory of your indicators, which I think is important. And the indicators are pointing in the right way. So we are confident that at the end of the government's program with IMF, you know, we'll be in a position where we can plan and look forward to doing uh, uh, better things for our country. But we, we are not waiting for the government's program to come to uh, fruition or to an end. We are already embarking on an export drive to mitigate the losses that we may make as a result uh, of the exchange rate uh, uh, variations. There's always, you know, for some of us in manufacturing, 
there's always you know a line which we call exchange losses on our on our balance sheet. It erodes what we have. Managing director of intravenous infusions, C said the company will put in place strategies to help mitigate the difficult operating environment. We we'll say has been a very good year if you compare that to other years that uh, we have been in operations. Uh, the performance was partly has to do with the increase in volumes that we did, as well as the price changes that are accompanying, I mean, because of the fall in the value of the city. So these are the two factors that co combine to help us to have a, a much bigger revenue. Uh, we've also been very strategic in the way we deploy our resources to the various product lines. Products that give us good margins is the areas where we concentrate. Intravenous Infusions PLC said the National Health Insurance Scheme did well in 2023, growing by 54.1% and 2% in debt, indicating that there was hope for the company to increase its profitability. Time now for Entrepreneur You. Now, discover why you, your burger always comes with fries or why the cocoa seller also offers kosi. It's all about cross-selling. Dr. Maxwell Lampon explains more on today's episode of Entrepreneur You. Hello, there is a reason why the cocoa seller always sells kosi. That is the same reason why those that sell trousers, sell shirts, like burgers will always come with fries. There is a huge, huge, huge risk in allowing customers to go to another competitor or to another place to get a product that is complementary to your service. So the business technique of offering complementary or additional services or products to your primary offering is called cross-selling. And which is why I will forever say that the inhabitants of Makola and Tudu and these market hubs, not that they're not already multi-millionaires, but they'll be multi-multi-millionaires should they have any formal training because they are already doing this. For instance, the tomato seller always sells pepper. He does not need to understand the formal concept of cross-selling, but at least he understands the concept of allowing a customer to go to the next shop to buy something that's complementary to what he's selling. The rice seller always sells oil, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure you can come up with many, many, many examples of that. Let us not confuse cross-selling though with upselling, which is offering a product that is more expensive than what you're already offering. You might buy a phone for instance and they might offer you a case. Oh, would you like a case as well? Now that is cross-selling. If you were to buy an iPhone 12 and they suddenly say, oh, would you like an iPhone 13? It's available. Now that's upselling. Cross-selling is when they offer you the complementary products like the earpiece and the phone cases, whilst upselling is offering a bigger product. It's why you are used to hearing for an extra 10 CDs, you can get the large size, or for an extra X amount, you'll be able to get larger than what you're already getting. Because that is upselling, trying to get the person to spend a little bit more on the primary product they're buying, whilst cross-selling is adding a complementary product. Now, why is that important to you? It's important to you because in the volatile market, like where we find ourselves right now. You need techniques in order to make sure that your revenue flow is not as sporadic or comes in spurts. You do not need to take any risk to your revenue stream. So when you find your niche, be it, let's say, in a shop, ask yourself, those that buy product A, what are other products B, C, D that they normally buy? And find that offering because if they don't get it from you, they go buy product B from the next guy. The next guy will probably have product A and then he will want to have product A and B at one location rather than go to two locations to get the same product. And that is cross-selling which we should not confuse with upselling which is offering a much more expensive product and that's all for today's entrepreneurial people brought to you by africa school of entrepreneurship and supported by gcb bank your bank for life